First of all, also a very warm welcome from my side and in the name of the entire COEO group um, board. And many thanks to the COEO UK team for making this great uh, event possible. So, and I, first of all, I have to mention that I'm not, uh, definitely not a sales or a marketing guy, so I'm a scientist, but what I really want to avoid is that my uh, um, presentation will become too technical, but there will be some technical uh, insights. So, um, I've so with a background in theor theoretical physics, I have dedicated my entire professional career to topics in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And now as a new CITO, Chief Innovation and Technology Officer uh, of COEO, I will be responsible for technical innovation in general, uh, but especially for, uh, develop for the development and implementation of, of generative AI use cases. So my um, talk uh, will be about the opportunities of generative AI and debt collection. And I want to describe how we at Coeo are using this kind of, of novel technology in order to recreate uh, our industry. Um, okay, but uh, let me start with a very brief introduction. Uh, to the history or to the historical development um, of, of AI and debt collection because I'm convinced that it's very important to understand uh, the history of AI in order to understand or realize the potential that generative AI uh, offers to um, our uh, industry nowadays. So from a very abstract point of view, uh, artificial intelligence is nothing really new. So one can say that artificial intelligence in terms of automation already started, in, I would say, in the early 90s with the age of IT. So uh, during this period, uh, during this phase, uh, one was able to, um, based on uh, information technology, one was able to create collection strategies and collection processes, but um, they were very static and determined. Um, so the strategy was one workflow for all adapters, and only a very few communication channels or technologies were available. Then, the, at the next stage, uh, at the age of automation, uh, one can say that um, uh, debt collection strategies and processes so became a little bit more dynamic. Um, um, so, and uh, one recognized an increasing customer interaction and also more uh, communication channels, including email, uh, were available. And then I would say in the early 2000s, uh, uh, we reached the age of machine learning. So, and based on a huge amount of, of data and methods from behavioral science and very sophisticated machine learning approaches, uh, one was able to create or build collection strategies. So, uh, with a very individualized uh, customer approach, and in addition, a wide range of communication technologies and channels, especially including um, AI-based bots like chatbots, uh, were available. And now, in 2023 and 2024, um, with AI, generative AI, we have, a, I would say, a real game changer. Uh, based on uh, generative AI technology, we are now able to, to create customized collection strategies based on very sophisticated technologies like avatars, like uh, large language model-based um, um, portals and bots, voice bots, email bots, um, and so on. And I, and I think there will be no, I'm convinced that there is no um, a business or industry will be as impacted um, by uh, generative AI as step collection. Okay, and as I mentioned, um, in the uh, early 2000s, um, um, machine learning and data science so uh, became a very uh, crucial and important part um, in the uh, debt collection uh, tech, technology stack. And I think this is only an uh, outcut of conceivable um, um, use cases um, that could have been implemented based on the currently existing uh, technology stack and the previous technologies. And I 
one can say that in general the aim was uh, to, to create uh, machine learning uh, tools in order to predict the, the probability or the, or the likelihood of success um, of different actions in a, in a debt collection process. And uh, one expected, or the expectation in terms of business impact was uh, to, to um, um, higher, higher efficiency, so cost savings, um, improve cost, customer satisfaction, uh, customer convenience, and also higher success rates. Okay, but now the focus um, will be on, on uh, generative AI. So, and first of all, as I already mentioned, there were some, some machine learning approaches and they have had a certain business impact, but the Im business impact is, uh, is limited. And one can say that the uh, so predecessor uh, technology of generative AI, so, um, is not able to make really a quantum leap. But now with generative AI, we have a, re we have a game changer and there is no um, other technology comparable to, to generative AI. You can see Instagram, um, WhatsApp and whatever. It's, it's, uh, with, with such a high um, uh, or with such an expected exponential growth. So there's no other um, technology in the history which will have such an, such an um, um, significant business impact. So, but I think it's, it could be very helpful to explain what generative AI is, or what my understanding of generative AI is. So, generative AI is able to create new and very innovative and creative content including uh, all kinds of texts and, and, and audio ma in, uh, images and, and um, even program code. And um, generative AI is able to connect uh, or to combine human knowledge, human knowledge, um, huge amount of training data, um, and very sophisticated um, machine learning algorithms um, in, in order to, to enable um, very, very novel and um, incre uh, to, uh, to enable enormous increases in efficiency. So, and another very important part is that one can uh, integrate um, generative AI technology so into uh, already existing infrastructures. So, on the right side, you can see an ima uh, image. Um, there are, um, so, so, um, Hyperscaling platforms like Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud Service, they play a very crucial role when it comes to um, the development and the deployment of, of generative AI technology. And it's very important that one can integrate this kind of platforms into currently existing uh, data infrastructure. And this is, I would say, a really uh, advantage of, 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 of um, generative AI, that it, generative AI is more or less a plug-and-play technology, or can, one can regard... Um, or integrate generative AI as a, a plug-and-play technology. And a synonym for generative AI is large language model, like GPT, ChatGPT. So every application of generative AI based on, on, on large language models, and I think it's important to understand how these large language models, models work. And a large language model is in general, nothing else than a very huge and complex neural network. So, um, for example, GPT-5 uh, is a neural network called Transformer and has um, approximately uh, more than uh, one trillion parameters. And one trillion par parameters is a, a comparable or is the same uh, uh, order of magnitude than the human brain. So. Uh, the current state of the art, uh, uh, large language models have the same complexity uh, than the human brain. But in the end, a large language mo uh, model uh, do nothing else than predicting words. So, the next word. And uh, you can see here an example. For example, if the um, input sequence is, this guy is, then a large language model can predict the next word in order to complete the sentence, and the next word could be blue. 
So the, the sky is blue, or the sky is clear, or the sky is usually, and so on and so on. But in this context, the word blue, or the term blue, has the highest probability. So um, um, the uh, large language model uh, recognized that um, the completion would most likely be this sky is blue. And that's how a large language model works. So it's it trained with a lot of data. So all these parameters are fixed and, and optimized with a lot of data, but in the end, it's nothing else than a word, next word prediction. But a very powerful <laughs> prediction. Okay. But uh, last but not least, um, um, I want to share some insights on the current status of, of um, generative AI at, at um, Coeo. So, um, at Coeo, so we are convinced at Coeo that um, generative AI and debt collection or collection generative AI is um, an all in one platform. And what does it mean, all in one platform? So, every application in the field of generative AI based on large language models. So, it's very important to integrate off a combination of large language models, of offline large language model, on-premise large language models, cloud-based, uh, cloud-centric large language models in a platform. And uh, based on this, one can build or develop um, use cases like uh, in um, generative AI, email bot and, or, e or a chat bot. And, um, Besides this, uh, another application um, is the um, call center agents. Here we want to, our plan is to automate um, the typical uh, call center agent task in terms of conversation, conversation to, to our customers. And this means we have to integrate uh, uh, several modules, including a large language model and speech to text. So we have to transform speech to text, the speech from the customer voice to text, and text to speech. Um, and the latency periods, uh, latency times is very important to reduce them in order to um, yeah, have a good uh, customer experience. Okay. So, uh, but in addition to um, to, to um, um, conversational AI use cases like chatbots, email bots, voice bots. There are many different um, conceivable, uh, um, conceivable applications of uh, generative AI. So generative AI can be used, I would say generative AI can be used in every phase of, of uh, debt collection management. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Is it also an AI? Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so um, one can use uh, generative AI for improved automation, optimization, but also to improving um, um, risk and compliance management. And it's very important, for example, if you take a look on, on the decision engine. As I already mentioned, um, based on the previous uh, technology stack, uh, one can build um, decision engines in terms of the next, next best action, uh, letter frequencies, uh, probability of defaults, and so on, in order to tailor a very bespoke um, um, customer journey. And now one, can, one is able to enhance or to en en enrich um, the currently existing AI technology with generative AI components. So one can embed or integrate large language models into the currently existing uh, decision engine applications or quality sentinel or, or analytics engine for statistics and reportings and so on. So it's very important. Generative AI is not only, um, so we are not only focusing on conversational tasks, there are many different um, conceivable applications. Um, um, yeah. Okay, and to make it a little bit more concrete, um, so, at the moment, we are working on, on generative AI initiatives and prototypes. And um, here I want to mention two uh, different applications. But first of all, one has to build a technology platform. So, it's very important that, you, that an organization 
is, um, um, is able to, to um, combine different uh, large language models like open source models, maybe you've heard from um, uh, Mistral or BERT, Google-based large language models, and also commercial platform solutions like OpenAI, ChatGPT, uh, um, so Azure tools, um, Google tools, one has to combine that and one has to autom uh, one has um, using some um, optimization techniques and modern scientific approaches in order to um, yeah, uh, customize this kind of technology. But then in the end, the aim is to, to build a state-of-the-art AI and data infrastructure uh, in order uh, to, to develop and um, to implement um, use cases like the AI engine for email-based customer services. Here we want to create a high-precision um, AI, a generative AI model in order to um, classify, automatically classify and um, um, response generation um, of incoming emails and the another application will be a chat and voice bot in order to automate, as already mentioned, in order to automate um, um, call center, typical call center um, task. And here we um, work with a fine-tuned large language models and integrate um, speech-to-text and text-to-speech models in order to um, yeah, automate the, uh, in order to integrate the voice bot into our telephony software. And we expect a significant or a huge uh, uh, business impact in terms of cost savings and higher success rates, and also in terms of um, uh, improved um, customer uh, convenience. So, um, so here is an example that appears or emerged from our, from our prototype email the email bot so here is um, so this is a test case of our email bot for automated email processing so and I wrote an email hello I'm currently unable to pay with a reference number and so on and then our email bot is able to um, provide an, an automated classification so the classif correct classification is a postponent and to um, create an automatic response, as you can see here. So we have both. We have a correct classification and a proper response. And uh, based on this, we can dark processing the entire event in terms of booking it in, in our um, um, case, case, case management um, um, system. So this is a technology with a massive business impact because we, we are now able to automate so at least 60% of all customer interactions, 60% of all customer interactions. Um, um, and in the end, we expect that we can uh, um, reduce uh, costs, so operational costs by over 90% um, and improve um, success rates and customer satisfaction. And this um, use case is based on, on uh, so very sophisticated uh, large language models with more than uh, one trillion um, um, uh, parameters. It's a cloud-centric approach. That means it's a plug-and-play solution. Um, we can integrate it and combine this solution with any kind of uh, internal and external data. Um, and um, so, and we trained this model with, with prompt engineering and terabytes of training, of training data with all, you can, all historical conversations and emails. Um, so, and, and by, um, by using or um, implementing some data, data mesh principles, we are also able to short, shorten the, the time to market by modulization. So we are, um, we are able to develop and to deploy uh, our, the different uh, applications in parallel. And uh, therefore, we also expect a very timely go live in the third quarter of this year, maybe with a prototype also in the second quarter uh, with this year. But um, so a rollout in, in, in the end or uh, third quarter or fourth quarter of this year. And um, there's also another, oh, sorry. 
I think there's one use case missed. Uh, I think the, the quality insurance. <laughs> This is, but uh, no, no problem, there's no slide, but, but another use case, very interesting UK, because yeah, the quality sentinel. So um, we are already implemented uh, very powerful uh, generative AI use cases in UK, the uh, quality assurance AI, and here we are able to, um, to transcribe 100% of uh, uh, phone recordings um, we can redact them with a uh, with an, um, um, generative AI tool, and then we are able to uh, um, to analyze and uh, the, the the content of the phone recording and to extract very important and valuable um, um, informations in order to in order to uh, scorecard uh, scorecard or to score. The the the, uh, um, the transcribes against our scorecarding points, and in the end, um, there are the main results is that we are able to demonstrate that we can build an AI bot that has a similar uh, quality uh, uh, than a uh, human-based uh, experience um, a quality insurance uh, auditor. And we, ca we are able to extend uh, the number of, of uh, uh, scorecarded phones from, I think, 1% to 100%. Um, and in the end, we are able to produce a lot of data, uh, a lot of data that we can provide uh, to our internal teams in order to optimize and improve internal processes and also to share some insights based on this data with our um, with our. Um, clients, and I think it's a very important use case that is already implemented in UK with a very significant business impact. So, and now, okay, okay, and yeah, now thank you for your attention, and maybe there is some time for some questions or discussion. Maybe yeah, I have to take a Cheers, Kevin. Um, I think the first one's an important one. Is it a common misconception that AI will provide cost savings when in the short term you have to employ experts to implement AI processes? I think that could probably be taken up a level that AI is an enabler um, to improve businesses. Would you agree? So I think, I think, <laughs> so I think this, the second question is, can I give, you, give a very short answer to the okay. second question? Feel what is the biggest second. risk of AI implementation in Europe? And I think the, big, the biggest risk is uh, that, that we uh, not um, use the, the, the opportunities that, that generative AI offers to our business. I think one has to find a balance between um, the technological capabilities and compliance. But for example, we at COEO, every, uh, we are coordinating every step in our development and in our, and in our uh, deployment with uh, the compliance team on the group level and on the regional, uh, uh, in the regional department. So it's very important to find the right balance between governance, uh, law, and, and so ethical issues, but it's also important to use and leverage the, 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 the opportunities of generative AI and the capabilities. So um, I think that's very important. Should we go to the... So it's a lot about dangerous and risky. <laughs> yeah, okay. there's a lot about the, the, the dangers and risks. You just want to touch on the security aspects of AI and how to handle that to make sure the business remains safe from that perspective, because there's been a lot of bad press about chat GPT, for yeah. example. And so first of all, it's, it's true that, that um, generative AI, models of generative AI are more or less a black box. So we are understanding how large language models work. So there are a lot of advances in terms of, of, um, of, um, uh, of local surrogates, interpretation of, of large language models. But in general, we do not know um, or have no information or less information about the training data that are used for training this, uh, this kind of models. And this leads quite often to uh, data protection issues, as you can maybe see in it, Italy or 
there are some um, legal claims between um, uh, OpenAI and, and the New York Times because uh, we do not know the data, the training data. And I think this is a problem, but in general, from the technical perspective, we are able to build something like a compliance pipeline in order to ensure that um, every legal issue, compliance issue, or all requirements concerning legal and, and, and uh, compliance are fulfilled. There was a question that's just disappeared off there that was around um, human interaction with AI. And um, if you use AI, does that completely remove the human interaction? I think we were talking about this yesterday, and that's, it's actually the complete opposite, if you want to yeah. just briefly touch on that. So I think, um, I think the, the most important advantage of, of generative AI is to enhance um, 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 human-based employees, call center agents, and so on. It's important that, that um, a generative AI is automating very simple tasks, but when it comes to very complex tasks or complex claims and cases, um, it's important that, that, that a human-based, uh, human uh, um, call center agents can, can focus on it. So at the moment, we're thinking that generative AI is more or less a tool in order to um, automate a very simple tasks and to enhance uh, the, 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 the human uh, capabilities or the cap capabilities of, of human labor, um, um, labor force. But to be honest, I do not know what uh, um, could be possible maybe in 10 or 20 years. And my expectation is that, we'll, we'll, that we will reach, reach a point where so uh, upscaling is possible and many of um, the human base tasks can be uh, automated by, by a generative AI. I think one final question. Um, there was a lot of worry there about gen generative AI becoming too powerful for its own good and then taking over the world yeah. Terminator style. What's your, what's your view on that? Is that happening anytime soon or? You mean this technological singularity? In yeah. Singularity, it starts learning and then it learns more than we know and then does it have a need for humans? <laughs> so there, <laughs> so I'm not a communist, but I may be <laughs> here, this case along with Karl Marx. So Karl Marx stated that only uh, uh, the technology uh, can, can, can lead, so only um, um, the, the capitalism is able to provide and to develop technologies which finally will lead to, um, to socialism. So if every task is automated uh, by, by AI, then yeah, we have enough time for doing anything else. Um, as uh, mentioned before, we can go for a walk, uh, enjoy nature, make music and so on. And I, I believe, uh, I think this is a very positive um, outlook into the future. But yep. yeah, one has to be careful and one has to find the right balance to check and control AI. I think this is very important. Perfect. Well, thank you for your time. Very insightful. Um, Kevin Yan, everyone.